I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast for the health of it. Remember to subscribe to our podcasts, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. Fun little show today. We're going to talk about today your vices, the things that you do that you probably make excuses for that are really destroying your health. And years ago, I used to date a girl and she had a great line. She said, moderation is for monks. You want an extreme life. And when I come to extreme life, what I'm talking about is extreme health. And I don't want moderate health. I want extreme health. And so a couple of things that you do, and I hear this all the time in my practices, patients say, well, Dr. Joe, I just whatever blank. You know, sometimes when I'm at a party, uh, if it's a holiday, if I'm stressed at, at work, uh, I get that one a lot too. You know, if Friday night when I get home from work, I'm exhausted, so I have to do something to relax. And many times wine is the one that fits into that vice. But I don't know about moderate health. I'm not sure I'm, I'm okay with moderate health. I want extreme health. And so we're going to talk about some of the things that you're doing all day, every day that are having adverse effects on your health and what you can do to fix it. Because one thing, if you've listened to the show before, you know, I don't just give you problems, I give you solutions. And it's fun because you'll listen to, I don't know, one show, 100 show, 1,000 shows, and you'll say, you know, I picked up this little hint here, I picked up this little hint here, and it's wonderful because patients come in our offices every day and they tell me that. You know, I've been listening to you for two years, five years, 10 years, whatever it is. And I remember you said at such and such a time, this, we talk about acid reflux, we talk about headaches, we talk about pain management. And I started doing that. You know, doc, I love this one. You were right. Of course I was right. I'm not making these things up. I'm giving you information that you need to get well and stay well. What you do with that information is totally up to you. And that's the challenge I run into is I want people to listen. And I know that if you just did it, you'd be happy with the results. Anybody ever raised children? Raise your hands. A lot of you, right? Yeah. And you think, gosh, if the kid would just listen to me, they wouldn't have the problems that they're having. Because I'm experienced and I did all these stupid things and I don't want you doing those stupid things, right? Say it with me. I know you do. Well, that's how I feel when it comes to patients. I know that if you did certain things, you would get these results. How often? Usually 100% of the time, say 99% of the time. And I know it works. You just have to do it. So I'll tell patients too. I'll say, listen, do what I say. If I'm wrong, so what? I'm wrong. But if I'm right, which I am, then you'll want to follow my advice forever. And then inevitably the patient does follow my advice and they say, you were right and it's wonderful. So let's just talk about some things that are in the news and why you got to be careful where you get your news from because sometimes it can be a little misleading. And there's an interesting study that came out not long ago, and the title of the study is Three Cups of Coffee a Day is the Sweet Spot for Health. A review of more than 200 studies finds that drinking coffee is associated with lower risk of death and heart disease in addition to other health benefits. So you read that, you read the title, and you say, wow, coffee good, I'm going to continue drinking my coffee, I've made the right decision, this is a great thing. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this study, I'm not going to argue with it. I'm not going to say that they're right or wrong. I'm just going to tell you what they didn't report on. Yeah, now, what was it? Right now, the rest of the story. So, okay, French fries, we know are bad. Sugar's bad, right? Alcohol's bad. We know about that. But suddenly there's this article out that according to this study, coffee gets a green light unless, I love this one, unless you're pregnant or have a risk of fracture or osteoporosis. Now, who is not at risk of osteoporosis? No one. Everyone can get osteoporosis, men and women, usually women more than men. But they're saying, you know, if you're if you're high risk, yeah, you shouldn't drink coffee, but if you're low risk, don't worry about it. What do you think makes you high risk to get osteoporosis? One of the things is drinking too much coffee. Because coffee's an acid. And there are what I call the seven deadly sins of nutrition, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. I know your whole diet, right? But those seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, one of the reasons they're all bad, 
you know, and, and they all have this in common, is that they form acid. It's called an acid ash. Now, when you burn wood, what's left over is the ash. Well, when you eat food, what's left over is the ash. So it leaves an acid ash. And when you put acid into the body, the body has to neutralize the acid. Well, the body uses calcium as one of its primary neutralizing agents. So if you're low risk, you're a football player, you're 16 years old, you're a male, you have great muscle strength, very low risk of osteoporosis. However, if you go on a high acid lifestyle, which a lot of people do, you will be depleting your body of minerals. You have to because the body has to neutralize the acid or else you go into acidosis and then you die. Not a good place to be. So what happens is you're, you're not eating the acid foods. You're in good shape. You are eating the acid foods. Your body's leaching the calcium from the bones. Eventually the bones become weak and now you're into that high risk of osteoporosis. So first of all, I had to laugh at that comment that you, unless you're at high risk. So you're, you're sucking minerals, especially calcium, out of your bones. Not a place you want to be. So not a good thing. Consumption was associated with lower risk of specific cancers, including prostate, endometrial, melanoma, non-melanoma skin cancer, and liver cancer. So by drinking the coffee, according to this study, you lowered your risk of cancer. I won't argue with that point. Consumption is also beneficial uh, so, uh, beneficial associations with metabolic conditions, including type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, gallstones, gout, renal stones, and liver conditions like hepatic fibrosis, cirrhosis, cirrhosis mortality, which means you die from it. And finally, there seems to be an association between coffee consumption and Parkinson's disease, depression, and Alzheimer's. So here they are saying, here's all the good news about coffee. Okay. I won't even argue those points. I didn't do the study. I don't know how they did the study. I don't have the, all the research on that. Did they use healthy people? Did they use sick people? Did they use people at a low risk to begin with? I don't know. Let's assume they're absolutely right on all of that. They found the biggest reduction of relative risk death. Uh, risk of death was the sweet spot of three cups of coffee a day compared to non-coffee drinkers. Bumping that up to four has not found any significant increase or, or increase in a benefit. So three cups was the sweet spot. All right. I won't argue with that either. Now, what didn't they cover? Is the downside worth the upside? Assuming all that upside is right, my feeling is no. We talked about the acid. When you put acid in your body, your body has to neutralize the acid, and the body uses calcium as one of its primary neutralizing agents. So it's sucking calcium out of the bones to neutralize the acid. Now, is calcium only in bones? Well, no. You need calcium to relax muscles. You need calcium to buffer the blood. You need calcium for a lot of different things. We just associate it with the, with, with the bones. But there's a lot more that your body needs calcium for. So you're depleting your body of calcium. And this is the kicker. If you're a coffee drinker, chances are it's not your only vice. If you're a coffee drinker, you might be eating or indulging in the seven deadly sins. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. So now... We're looking at other lifestyle issues. You have to not just give up the coffee. You have to change a lot of things. It's highly sprayed with chemicals. Coffee beans, unless they're organic, are highly sprayed with chemicals. And those chemicals are now being brewed, if you will, into your coffee and you're drinking and eating them. And that can cause problems. And a lot of the chemicals that we use as pesticides and herbicides, pesticides kill bugs, herbicides kill weeds, are endocrine disruptors. What does that mean? Well, your endocrine system, your hormone system can be affected and it acts like estrogen. It acts like you're putting estrogen in your body. And the body has to now react to this estrogen because estrogen is a very potent hormone and it tells the body what to do. And one of the things these estrogen-like compounds tell the body to do is abnormal cell growth. And if you have abnormal cell growth, what do we call that? Well, cancer. Exactly. So endocrine disruptors, I believe, and a lot of research is agreeing with me, is now causing our cancer. Remember, was it President Kennedy started the fight on cancer? How are we doing on that? Uh, not too good. People still dying of cancer every day. So that's since 19, uh, was it 61, 62, somewhere in there when Kennedy started the, 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 the war on cancer. Well, it's not working out so well because we're really not winning that war. And if I go off on a, on a tangent here, I go nuts when I see fundraisers for cancer research. And we're going to have a bake sale 
for cancer research. How insane is that? What's one of the drivers of cancer? Cancer cells love sugar. So you're selling sugar to help prevent cancer. And I, you know, I don't want to be a cynic, which sometimes I am, but what is that like job security? I'm going to make sure that people have enough sugar so that we can continue to feed the cancer cells. Does it make me very happy? We all know, I don't think there's anyone out there that in the research world that would say eating good food is one of the ways we help prevent cancer. Nutrition has a direct link to cancer. So why are we selling junk food? Why are we having a steak dinner with open bar to raise money for cancer research? Well, here's your money. Take your money and here's my research. Don't drink alcohol and eat meat. There, I just saved you a ton of research money because I'm going to give you the money anyway and I don't want you to get cancer. But if you get cancer, I guess then you become part of the system. Now, I don't think it's malicious. I don't think that there's some big conspiracy out there that people are sitting around smoking cigars going, how can we kill more people? I know, we'll have a have a cigar. We'll have a uh, open bar and steaks. I don't think that's happening because I don't think the doctors want to get cancer either. But we all know that a plant-based diet is an excellent way to help ward off cancer. Is it the only way? No. Is it going to prevent all cancer? No. Is it going to statistically increase your odds of being healthy for the rest of your life? Absolutely, yes. So here we are saying if you drink coffee, that can help prevent certain types of cancer, but now you're putting a lot of chemicals into your body, which can affect the hormone levels. Caffeine. Why do we drink coffee anyway? It has caffeine in it. Well, caffeine looks like a chemical in your brain called adenosine. And when adenosine is released in your brain, it gets absorbed into your brain and it makes you tired. So, okay, I've worked hard all day. My brain releases adenosine. Adenosine receptor sites absorb the adenosine and I get tired. And that's perfectly normal. That's what's supposed to happen. Well, caffeine looks like adenosine and it blocks up the adenosine receptor sites. When it blocks up the adenosine receptor sites, you don't get tired. So coffee doesn't really give you energy. It prevents you from getting tired. Does that make sense? Say yes. Good. Okay. So it's preventing you from getting tired. So then your body says, no, wait a minute, Joe. I have to rest. So I'm going to produce more adenosine receptor sites so I can absorb more adenosine so I can get more tired. And what happens then? You drink more coffee, increasing your acid levels and increasing the amount of chemicals that you spray it on your body. Also, caffeine stresses your adrenal glands. Now, the adrenal glands produce adrenaline, which gives you energy. They produce prostaglandins, which help with inflammation. And they produce something called pregnenolone. Pregnenolone becomes DHEA and DHEA becomes your sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone. If you're under stress, how many of you are drinking coffee when you're under stress? Most of you. It doesn't produce more sex hormones. It produces something called cortisol. Cortisol causes you to lay down fat. Cortisol makes you weak. Cortisol is your stress hormone. So you see all this? You're stressing out your adrenals, which is now causing other health problems problems. And as a chiropractor, my big concern is reduction in pain, increasing nerve function or normalizing nerve function, I should say, and reducing inflammation. So if you're drinking coffee, it's an acid which can cause inflammation and it can affect your prostaglandin production, which can prevent you from reducing inflammation. And now you're fighting with me. You come in and see my team of doctors and I, and you're fighting with us because you're doing things that are contrary to what we're trying to do, which is open up the pinched nerves, relieve your pain, get the organs working properly, and reduce inflammation. So you read the study and went, wait a minute, it helps reduce pancreatic cancer? Whoa, that's great. I'm going to drink more coffee. Well, what about everything else in your body? And again, as a chiropractor, I worry about these things. Because when you come in to see us in our offices, or if we just do nutrition work over the phone, or if you just listen to my shows, I want to give you all the tools you need to get well and stay well. And if you're doing things that are counterproductive to what we're trying to do, I get frustrated and you get frustrated. And then worse is you say, well, I went to the chiropractor and it didn't help. Did you do everything the doctor said or any doctor? It doesn't matter. Chiropractor, medical doctor, neurosurgeon, did you do everything they said? No. Okay. So why don't you try doing everything they say and see what happens? Because again, as your doctor, if I am your doctor, or my team of doctors are your doctors, I don't see all the patients, is we want to get the re pain, pain reduced. I want to get the inflammation reduced. I want to get you healthy. I want you eating the foods that can help you live longer. I want your brain to work the best it possibly can. Gee, that sounds like a plan, doesn't it? A healthcare plan. 
as opposed to what most people have is just insurance, but they don't actually have a plan to get well and stay well. So something as simple as cutting back or cutting out your coffee is going to be a key player. It's a piece in a puzzle. Is it going to solve all the problems? No. Is it going to start solving the problems? Yes. And the tough part, in my first book, uh, prescription, uh, Eating Right for the Health of It, I talk about kicking the habit. If you're on coffee and you're addicted to it, what you need to do is start cutting back. And the secret I give you in that book, you should buy the book, by the way, but if you don't, there's a chapter called Kicking the Habit. Get a cup of coffee, sit it in front of you, and I'm going to tell you what kind of coffee in just a second. You know, Regular coffee is not good for you. I'm going, to, I'm going to negotiate with you in just a second, so hang on. Take a tablespoon of black coffee every hour. That's going to give you just enough caffeine to help prevent the headaches and help you get over the crash. Because again, I want to get you well and keep you well. So folks, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge and plan on opening a few more very soon. If you'd like to make an appointment, go to my website, drjoesposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world, and we'll get you set up as soon as possible. We accept people with all insurances, no insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. We accept anyone. And we have payment plans for everyone. Because some of you have $6,000 deductibles and $100 copays. So you know what? You don't have insurance. You have it, but you can't use it anyway. So it's ridiculous that some people say, well, you, you, my insurance is... is, is, is yeah. I understand that. However, let's get the numbers. Let's look at the real numbers. I had a doctor one time that worked with me and he gave me some good information. He said, information without emotion. Give me the information and then let's analyze it. So remember that phrase, information without emotion. But if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, if you've ever been in a car accident, ever, if the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. So go to my website, make your appointment right now, drjoesposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe. We're the number one Dr. Joe in the world. We're going to get you set up. in Marietta. We have offices Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We want to get you well and keep you well. Stop suffering needlessly. So more thoughts on coffee. Coffee stresses the adrenals. It's sprayed with chemicals. It's also diuretic. What does a diuretic mean? It makes you pee. Do you ever notice how you drink coffee? You got to go pee. Drink coffee. You got to go to the bathroom. Have bowel function. Because it's an acid. And the acid can irritate your bowels and cause the bowels to release. I'm not sure that's the best way to get the bowels to release. But also is a diuretic and dehydrates you. So when you're dehydrated, this is the irony, you get tired. So when you get tired, what do you want to do? Drink more coffee to give you energy, which it doesn't give you energy. It robs the body of energy. And so now you kind of, what was it? Elvis said you're caught in a trap, right? You're caught in a trap. You can't walk out. Because the more tired you get, the more coffee you drink, the more coffee you drink, the more tired you get, the more, and so you're back and forth. And it, you got to drink fluids. If you really want to get your energy back, you got to drink more water. Because there's a part of your brain that controls hunger and there's a part of your brain that controls thirst. And so if you're hungry, many times you're not hungry, you're thirsty. And so what you need to do then is drink more water. It'll curb your appetite, but water will also give you the energy that you're craving. And that's why you're drinking the coffee to begin with. It's a bowel stimulant, like we said, so that can be a good thing if you're constipated, but the key is if you're constipated, you should be eating a better diet. And also, as a chiropractor, we always check the nerve supply to organs. So for example, if you have an injury in your low back, that's the nerve that might cause back pain, leg pain, hip pain, knee pain, ankle pain. It's the same nerve that controls your colon, sex organs, and bladder. So if you have a pinched nerve in the low back, you might have gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, urinary problems, sexual problems, performance issues. It's a family show. We'll keep it clean. So pinched nerves in the low back not only can affect pain, but they can affect the organs. And every nerve in the body controls an organ. You can have a pinched nerve to your pancreas, your spleen, your kidneys, your gallbladder, your adrenal glands, your heart, your lungs, your diaphragm, your stomach. So this is the basis, of, and this is the trend, by the way, in healthcare, if you want to know what a trend is. The trend is going toward getting to the cause of the problems. We talked a couple of weeks ago about the opioid crisis and how hospitals are now saying you have to offer alternatives to opioid treatments before you give opioids. Now, sometimes opioids are necessary. I'm not against them, but we have to offer an alternative to the opioid treatments. And one of those alternatives that the hospitals now are required to offer as, as one of the options is chiropractic care. Pretty cool, huh? So for 100 plus years, we chiropractors have been saying, we are really good at getting rid of pain. And there's, a, I don't know how many studies out there showing that chiropractic should be the primary treatment for back pain. And now finally, it's becoming standard. 
which makes me excited. Hopefully they'll do it now. It's the, it's the rules. They have to do it. So we want to make sure that we get to the cause of your problem. So if you're constipated, maybe you have a pinched nerve to your bowels. Maybe you need to change your diet. Maybe you have spasms. Your stomach can spasm and push up against your diaphragm. And if the stomach spasms, the whole bowel spasms. And there's a, a way we can do it. We adjust or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. And when we do that, many times that gets the bowels to release. Works really good on kids. Gosh, kids, kids well, kids are smarter than us. They, they respond so much faster than we do. So you want to make sure that you're getting the body functioning normally, not just treating the symptom, but getting to the cause. And that's the problem that most people have. They never thought about the cause of their problem. So talking about coffee, I, I digress there for a second. If you're going to drink coffee, organic only, this way you could avoid the pesticides. I would prefer you do organic decaf, which still has caffeine, by the way. Decaffeinated coffee doesn't have no caffeine. It has less than the original brand. So if you go into one of these fancy $8 cup of coffee uh, coffee shops and order a decaf and you think their decaf tastes so much better, there's a reason for that. Because their uh, plain coffee, their original coffee, whatever the word is, has a lot more caffeine than the stuff you would brew at home. So because it has so much more caffeine... We then take a little bit out. We call it decaffeinated. And the, the coffee that you bought at the fancy shop, the decaf many times has more caffeine than the decaf, that than the regular coffee that you made at home. Did you follow that? So the decaffeinated has more caffeine than the stuff you made at home, which is regular. Pretty wild, huh? So you really want to start considering not being duped by just terminology and phrases because that's marketing. That's brilliant marketing. You bought it. I bought it for years. Decaffeinated, that means no caffeine, right? No, I was giving a lecture one time. I, where was I? I think it was in Florida, Utah, I can't remember. And a guy came up to me and says, Dr. Joe, I work for a coffee industry. I said, really? He says, and you're wrong. And I figured up, here comes a battle. And he talked about the coffee and how they decaffeinate it. Many times they use things like turpentine and formaldehyde to decaffeinate the coffee. He said, so if you're going to do coffee, you want to do organic decaf. He says, that would be the healthiest choice. So right from the horse's mouth. I learned that. So don't be duped by things like that. And you have to drink a lot of water because coffee is a diuretic and your body runs on fluid. We're about 80% water. So if you're not giving your body the right amount of water, you're going to dehydrate and that can affect your muscles. That can affect pain. Again, we see pain patients all day, every day, my, my doctors and I. And so when patients come in our office, we tell them, listen, we want to give you the best chiropractic care possible. That's what our goal is. However, you're going to have to help a little bit. We want you to maybe take some supplements. At least, I tell people, take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Because coffee and the other foods are so acidic, you need to alkalize your system. And even if you eat a good diet, I take it every day and I eat a great diet, I want to keep the body slightly alkaline. So if you're, if you're doing nothing else, at least I'm begging you, please take a good supplement. I recommend Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. The Super Greens alkalize the system. Good source of omega-3 fatty acids, good source of iodine to help your thyroid work. And then the essential source is like about, close guess, 10 servings of raw fruits and vegetables. Then we had prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, a complete multivitamin. Tastes great, by the way, too. And so I take a scoop of each. I mix it with some coconut milk or almond milk, shake it up, drink it uh, at least once a day. It's great for kids. Take a frozen banana, throw it in there, whip it up, make a little smoothie for the kids or for yourself. And it's unbelievable. I have every, every day, every single day, patients call us, email us. Uh, I run into them out in public and they'll say, Dr. Joe, loving your green stuff. The super green is the essential source. Oh my gosh, that stuff's amazing. Why wasn't I taking this my whole life? And it helps the brain work better because it gives you the vital nutrients that your brain needs. So if nothing else, super green is an essential source. And you can get information on that on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. And you can see, on, it says store, under the store, you'll see several other supplements we have, but those are the, the, the two that I want to talk about today. Well, you know, I could talk about the bowel cleanser too. We have an intestinal cleanser. If your bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, yes, I said a day, not a week or a month, it may not hurt to take some Dr. Joe's intestinal cleanser to kind of jumpstart things. So, folks, if you want to make an appointment, come see us. Again, offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world, and you can book an appointment online. You can call us. We accept everyone, people with insurance, people without insurance, 
car accidents, sports injuries. I've never seen a car accident ever where the car was damaged and the occupants weren't. And I get calls every day. Dr. I was in an accident, but I wasn't hurt. I'll say, okay, come see us anyway. We do an analysis and 100% of the time we find something wrong. And they say, wow, I didn't realize how sore it was there. Or they wait a few weeks and then they say, Dr. Joe, I'm in so much pain. You were right. So I don't want to be right. I just want you to come in and see us. So make an appointment today, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. Uh, the Super Greens, the essential source. Also on Amazon, by the way, too, if you have an Amazon account. Hey, thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the show. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening to For the Health Fit. Remember to subscribe to this podcast, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 Eastern Time on wsbradio.com and on a WSB Radio app.